So now I'm going to decompress the orbit. So what you need to do is to identify the laminar pepper sphere. Once you've got a laminar pepper sphere, you just have to open it up. Like how I'm doing now. So then we go all the way to the back. We'll put the bone here, the bone. So follow the orbit all the way to the back. So when you do this, can you see how, how hard the bone is? Yeah? This is so I need to remove this piece of bone and come all the way to here. Right? I'm going to go into this plane, move the bone. So no matter how hard the bone is, it's all about space. That's I'm going to remove this bone here as well. That takes me to the optic strut, right at the back there. So this is the last piece of bone that I need to move so that I can decompress the optic strut. Can you see this bone here? Now I'm going to use thread, remove this bone. You can see guys? It's like eating a Cornetto ice cream cone. Just follow the orbit, the, the ice cream cone takes you straight to the orbit. Now it all depends on how hard the bone is. I rarely have to use the drill to decompress the optic nerve, but it's always a first. So this is the bone that is keeping that's the optic nerve. Can you see? If the optic strut is like this, can you imagine the clivers and so on? So I'm going to remove a little bit of bone, then I'm going to remove a little bit of bone over the optic nerve. So the idea is just to thin the bone. Can you see, guys? Now the optic nerve is exposed. I rarely have to use a burr for. So now we are going to decompress. This bone that is stuck. And the other thing is, remember when you do this, it's so easy to, to injure your endoscope, yeah? So you have to be very careful when you do this. So you see how far and to keep my scope. But there's this very thick piece of bone here. Can you guys see that? Huh? Feel again. I'm going to drill. Can you reduce the water so that uh, let's take off the water so that we can see what we're doing? And I need to drill this ledge of bone. Okay, try it again then. Now, I'm, now I'm just going to put this thread, move the board patch. See, usually this bone comes out easy. Can you see how much force I need to use? Uh, I need another cup of coffee after this. There. You remove the bone until you come to the optical cavitical recess. That's optic nerve decompressed. Can you see, guys? All the way to the optical cavitical recess. So if you if you need to do an optic nerve decompression, so what you want to do is to, if your compression is from the outside, so removing the lesion is enough. But if you have an optic neuritis where 
the, there's a lot of edema inside the nerve, then you need to cut the perineal sheet here. And you will see how thick the sheet is until you are able to see the muscles at the cone. So this is the muscle attachment at the ligament of Zilm. This is the ligament of Zilm here. You have to cut the ligament of Zilm until you are able to see the muscle and that's the optic. Okay. Can you see the white structure across? That's how much you need to cut to see the optic nerve here. That's your optic nerve right inside there. Guys, can you see? Can you see how much you need to cut? So it's very difficult to injure the optic nerve during surgery. Because there's a lot of structures that you need to cut before you reach. That's the optic nerve. Guys? Now, okay. let's hope the other part is not so hard. Okay, right again. So I'm going to now remove and decompress the floor. Let's now dissect the bone from here. We have a job to do lunchtime. We'll switch heads with Chris. Huh? Please elevator now. No, no, I'm just joking. Please elevator. For the quarter. So what I want to do now, we're going to do a transorbital medially. Can you see, guys? So that's the anterior model artery coming across here. Can you see? Now, and that's the posterior model artery here. Right? So I'm going between the, and look at how the, both the anterior model artery and the posterior model artery get stretched if I do this. So it's quite difficult to injure the vessels because the vessels are very really elastic. They'll just get stretched, if I show you like this. So now we're doing transorbital, and we're going all the way to the 12 o'clock, to the, to the nose as well. So this is the anterior model artery. Go here. That's the anterior model artery here. Can you see? Can you see, guys? Yeah. So that's running between the superior oblique up and the middle rectus down here. So now we are doing a transorbital medially. Okay. Look at this structure up here. The muscle above the artery, that's superior oblique. Can you see guys up there? And underneath here is middle rectus. So can you see how both the anterior and the posterior model, model arteries are just being stretched? They don't snap. So it's quite difficult to injure the, the, injure the vessels. So don't be scared of the artery. Right? So. Yes, because this is the plane between the superior oblique, there. This is superior oblique up there, and this is middle rectus down here. So this is how you enter intraconal orbit. Ah, this is nice. Can you see the superior border of the middle rectus muscle? And here is the inferior border of the superior oblique muscle there. So this is the junction between the superior oblique and the middle rectus and how the artery goes in between. So this is your entrance to the cone of orbit. If, if, if it is required. So now, I'm going to open up the periorbita. So, the classical teaching is to do three incisions. But me being lazy as I am, I just remove the entire periorbita in one single strike. Then, cut it all the way to the back. And you remove the periorbita so that the entire orbit decompress as you can. Yes? So when you press the orbit, that's the orbit for you. The next step is to identify the middle of the trunk. So you will see there's a lot of fat anteriorly, but there's not much fat posteriorly here. So it's much more easier to injure the orbit posteriorly than anteriorly. Is the, is the image on the screen clear, guys? Clear? Good. Now what I want to do is I want to dissect and show you the junction between the middle rectus muscle the superior oblique if I can. So I'm going to go above the middle rectus muscle. Ah, that's the junction. So let's cut this. That's the junction here. Middle rectus, superior part. Here, can you see? 
the superior margin of the middle vector is fed there. The same way, let's go to the inferior rectus and find the junction between, beautiful, can you see guys? That's the inferior margin of the middle rectus. And inf this is the inferior rectus marked down here. So look at how big of a plane do you have between the middle rectus inferior margin, that's the inferior rectus. Okay? So now, with this, you can remove trans orbital. This is not artery, yeah? your artery is still intact, by the way. Yeah? You see? Yeah? That this is the anterior model artery is intact, and this is the posterior model artery intact as well. Can you see, guys? So this is just a fascia, yeah? in case you're wondering. So you can remove tumors transorbitally from the endoscope all the way to 12 o'clock and beyond, if required. Go between the anterior and the posterior ethmoidal artery. You can remove tumors under the uh, periorbiter. Now, what do we do if the lesion is inside the cone of orbit? Go and dissect your middle rectus muscle. Lift it up like this. And you will see the oculomotor nerve. Beautiful. Can you see that? That's the oculomotor nerve. I remember the first time I did this many years ago. And I asked my eye colleague, is this the oculomotor nerve? They said, we have never seen the eye like this in our life. But this is, must be the oculomotor nerve. Can you see? The supplies the middle axis muscle. Now we are inside the cone of orbit. Now I'm going to dissect and remove the tumors or the fat with the cone of orbit, and if you are lucky, you can see the optic nerve. That's the vessel, branches, branches from the ophthalmic artery. And I think we are lucky. That's the optic nerve. See okay, guys? That's the optic nerve. So this makes up for the hard bone. Thank you. <laughs> Look at, I'm going to dissect, and that is the orbital apex there. So this is how we do our intraconal work. So I think we were the, among the first to publish our series. We had 14 cases and we published it in 2014. Intraconal orbital tumors, transnasally, and now you can see the orbital apex here. Okay. So now I'm going to go above the optic nerve and dissect it and expose almost 270 degrees of the optic nerve. Same way, you can actually go below the optic nerve. The only problem, the ophthalmic artery branches are there. And now you can see the optic nerve decompress 270 degrees, and that's the orbital effect. Yes? Yeah, you can. So, no, so the, very good question. Yeah, uh, exactly, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a large guy. Can you see? Very big. And we only remove tumors here. So usually when you remove and decompress the orbit, take away the fat, remove the middle rectus up like this between the middle rectus and the, superior, the inferior rectus here, you, the, your tumor is here. So your tumor protects the optic nerve. You understand, right? So, so this approach is more for tumors on the middle aspect. So you, the tumor literally protects the optic nerve, the, number one. And number two, can you see there is like a, a membrane, a lining over the optic nerve? You preserve that. You don't damage this. As long as you don't damage this lining, you're safe. You will never get an injury to the optic nerve as long. Can you see there's a lining up right here? Yeah? So if you remove this, correct. If you remove this perineum, and inferiorly is your ophthalmic artery here. So you have to be very careful when you dissect. These are the branches of the ophthalmic artery. Can you see? So as long as you respect the artery, keep him far away, keep the perineum intact, and the membrane over the perineum actually, you can actually go all the way above the optic nerve to the other side as well. 